I'm Randy Furson and I'm here actually for the third time in Madrid and I am teaching a class today on structured analytical pr presentation and production and I've also been teaching courses on structured analytical techniques. So I've written several books on how to do advanced analytical techniques, specifically structured analytical techniques and we've also written books on critical thinking and effective writing of analytical papers. Traditionally, a lot of people write papers by simply reading and then deciding what makes sense and then writing it down. Uh, what we've tried to do is encourage them to have more structure to their process, where they would challenge their assumptions, they would provide a mechanism or structure, do a pros or a cons, use different techniques to challenge, develop hypotheses, test hypotheses, but have a process that they use to do analysis which also allows people to see how they came to their conclusion. But what we've seen is that if we're going to do good analysis and do analysis that is compelling and persuasive, the recipient of the analysis, the decision maker, has to know how you came to the conclusion. And that requires that you go through a critical thinking process. And there we have different versions of how you do that. To look at, take a problem, understand, break it down into its elements, uh, decide how that works, and then develop a process by which you can provide an argument or a, a paper that is compelling and persuasive to the policymaker. Well, one of the things we recommend is that if you use solid analytical processes and you develop analytical techniques, if you're a good analysis, analyst, you will find not only problems that they have to deal with, you also find opportunities. So we encourage using the techniques to look for ways in which people can be more effective and also ways in which they face bigger problems. And you can use the techniques both to help make good decisions and also to warn people about things that could become a problem later in, in time. To be a good analyst, I could give you five hours of answers to the question, but to make it simple, and that's what we try to do, is to have simple processes and models, I would say there are three things that are most important. The first is that a good analyst has to have expertise. They have to be knowledgeable about their situation. In the United States, one of the things we recommend highly is that they learn a foreign language and they understand foreign cultures and they live in foreign cultures as well as in their own. In Spain, that's less of a problem, and which gives the Spanish maybe an advantage. The other two things that are absolutely critical is that a good analyst has to have rigor and structure in how they do their analytical process. They can't just say this is what I believe or this is what I think. They have to be able to show through a rigorous process that they have developed an argument, developed information to support it, worked through their evidence, and they have a, a transparent process for how they reached it. And lastly, a really good analyst has to have imagination. They have to be able to think about what has not been thought about before. They need to use some of the techniques we teach to help them be more creative and a big problem with analysis is that they lack the imagination and the ability to get outside of today's world to understand how tomorrow's world is going to be very different and what's going to cause that to be different. 